human object, another one. His name is going to be Joe. And we can say new human. Just like that. Notice what I did here. I created a variable as well as assigned the object on the same line. So I just wanted to show you that variation that you can do that on the same line. Up here we split it up into two lines. We're doing it in the same line here. Both ways are fine. So I'll just fill this out with some information. Alright, so I filled that out. Now we can ask Joe to speak. And when I run this, we will see both Tom and Joe speaking. So this is what happens when Tom speaks, and this is what happens when Joe speaks. And that behavior is defined in the class itself. So if we go to the human class, it's defined here. And we're invoking the method on the human objects. Now keep in mind that both Tom and Joe are different software objects. They have similar behavior and characteristics as defined in their class, but they are completely separate objects. So to summarize, we use the human class's constructor to create two human objects. And we assign those objects to variables right, of type human. So this is a variable. Right? And oftentimes, it's, uh, people just uh, shorthanded and call it an object. But in reality, this is a variable. And the object is created when the application runs. So, so far in this example, I've just left the body of the constructor method empty. But the constructor is far more powerful than what I've shown here. Remember that the constructor is intended to provide instructions for how objects of that class should be constructed or created or born, so to speak, as in this silly example. Now, we can actually assign values to a human object inside of the constructor for the class so that we don't have to set these fields later after the object has already been created. So let's modify the constructor to set the fields for humans. So I'll go into human. And what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to just copy this and place that inside of the human constructor method. And I'll remove the actual object variable here. By the way, this Tom is also referred to as a reference variable. All right, some more terminology. Let's get back to this class, so the Earth class. I want to go over a little bit of terminology. This variable that we define, Tom, is known as an instance variable. It points to the actual object, the actual instance, right? And it's referred to as an instance variable. Right? Some people also call it as an object variable. But it's important to keep in mind that this is just a variable. And the actual object is created when this statement is executed. The location for where the object is created in memory is uh, basically uh, referenced by this particular variable. And if that doesn't make sense to you right now, don't worry. Those little details uh, will clear up soon as you get more practice in the course. All right, so let's get back to the human constructor. And now I'm assigning the age, the eye color, uh, the height in inches, as well as the name. I want you to guess what will happen when we run this application again. So let's get back to Earth. I'll get rid of Tom. And I'll get rid of Joe's basically everything in here. And I'll create a new human. We'll say human1 is equal to new human. Create a couple of humans. Human2 is equal to new human. 3. And what we'll do is we'll ask these human objects to speak. We'll ask all of them to speak. Now when I run this, can you guess what will happen? Let's run this and see. So this is what gets printed. And notice that all three of these humans 
have the same name, they have the same height, they have the same year, and they have the same uh, eye color. The reason for that is we have hard-coded their creation, right? In the human class, uh, in the constructor, we are assigning values to the fields that belong to those objects. So we have basically initialized these objects with the same exact values. Now my question to you is, does that mean that they're the same object? Of course not. They're completely separate objects. Just because they have the same values assigned to the fields doesn't mean that they're the same object. They're three independent objects because we have this new uh, human, new human being repeated three times. So that means three objects were created. These are variables pointing to that the object. And then we're asking these variables to, hey, the object that you're pointing to, make it speak. So there are three different objects, and they're, all three of them are speaking. And unfortunately, they all have the same values. So we want to make this constructor a bit more dynamic. So going back to the human class, I don't want to just hard code these values here. I want to be able to assign these values. Let me show you how to do that. What I'll do is I'll get rid of this constructor from this class. And when you right click and you go to source, Eclipse provides a handy refactoring or code filling uh, utility. And you go to generate constructor using fields. When you click that, you use the fields here, leave them all checked, and hit OK. And now we have made this constructor more dynamic. We're not hard coding those values in here. We're actually expecting the caller of this human constructor method to pass in values that will be then assigned to that object's fields. So going back in Earth, notice that this method is no longer valid. It's saying add arguments to match the human constructor. So let's click that and let's give some values. So the first value was age, we'll say is 25. We'll create a new Tom. Height in inches, we'll say he's 76 inches tall, super tall guy. And the eye color, we'll say his eyes are blue. So similarly for the second human, we can give them some values. So when you're inside of these brackets, you can actually control space, and it pops out this uh, IntelliSense that tells you what are the variables, in which order we should give them. So we can give the name first. So we'll say this is Joe. And uh, the second variable is the age. So let's give him age of 28, height in inches, 68. And we'll give him green eyes. And to keep things simple, I'm just going to have two humans. So when I run this, notice that the values are different. Tom speaks different values, and Joe is speaking different values. That's because we have initialized, we have instantiated these objects with different values. So their behavior is different. What is their behavior? If you go back to human, inside of the, this is their behavior. So it's actually, even though it's the same behavior, but the actual execution of the code is different. Now, to, just a quick repeat, if we go back to human and we look at the constructor here, now our constructor is far more flexible. The callers of this constructor method can pass in the values that they please, and the human object will be created with those fields properly assigned. Let's talk a little bit about this keyword here that you're seeing. This keyword is actually a variable in Java, and it points to the current object. Back in Earth class, the first variable that we created, the first human object that we uh, created here, is an instance of the human class. And to represent this particular instance, that this variable is being used in its class definition. All right. So in short, the this keyword is actually a variable that references 
this particular instance. And during this execution, when this line is executing, the this variable is pointing to this object. Now don't worry if that sounds a bit confusing. Once you go through uh, some practice assignments in the course, it'll become much clearer. Now I want you to try an exercise, and that is to create a class called zoo, and create another class called animal. In the zoo class, you can define the main method, which, again, remember, is the starting point or the entry point of our application. And in the animal class, define general attributes that all animals in a zoo may have. For example, their age, their gender, or weight in pounds, or whatever. Along with these fields, also define behaviors that all animals can conduct at a zoo, such as eat or sleep. After defining the specification in the class, create three instances of the animals, so basically three animal objects, in the zoo class's main method, right? And invoke their eat and sleep methods. Play around with this. Be creative. Create two other classes for bird as well as fish, and give them methods like fly and swim, and create those objects in uh, the zoo class as well. All right, so try that out on your own first, and then move on to the next lesson.